How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week five. We're sitting at number 21 in the country with a 3-1 and one record. And we'll be playing on the road at a 2-1 and one Iowa for our second conference matchup of the season. Iowa expected to win. They are the higher overall team. Uh, they have the better offense, but statistically their defense is not very good. Not sure exactly what that means for our matchup. Uh, is there a reason? They beat their FCS team, which this season is not a given. So congrats to them for that. And then lost to Iowa State 55 to 31. So that certainly did not help their defensive numbers. And then they were able to beat an 0 and 3 Penn State 24 to 14. I have no idea what to take from these numbers especially because Iowa State's 1-2. and two. Hopefully that means it's an easy win for us. That's always something that I would enjoy. Now, we did have a coach level up for John Arnold, but unfortunately my OBS just kind of screwed up and didn't show it, but uh, we put it into the cannon. Uh, throw power and accuracy. Just anything, really, I think, to help Albert Johnson because, well, he needs it. Speaking of Albert, a quick look at uh, some steez and stats at this point. Albert, 443 passing yards through four games is definitely not good. But at the top of the list, Will Dixon, the Teal Boy quarterback. We would love to see them have some success. They've been okay, but not great since we left. Receiving-wise, it's Jeff Fontenot uh, leading the team, but 63rd in the nation with just over 200. Uh, and it skipped over the rushing. Uh, Durham Finch, less than 200 yards through four games is... Pretty disappointing after the season that he had last year. For sacks, it's Carter and Sims at the 1-3. and three. Carter, 9 sacks. That is huge through 4 games. Hopefully he can continue that sort of production. And then, interception-wise, Dallas Miller. Top 40 in the country with 2 picks for the freshman strong safety. We did have 1 change to the name of a player. Uh, again, Tier 2 channel members and up. Once a season can change the name of our recruits. So uh, Brandon Lane is no more. Now we have Jody Gentry. Chris, you can let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. But the freshman wide receiver has had their name changed. And again, if you want to get in on this, tier two channel members and up have that opportunity. And it also helps support the channel quite a bit. How about our top 25 polls? We know that we're 21st in the country. I don't think there's a lot of ranked matchups. Uh, we've got number seven, Clemson, at number 12, Notre Dame. Uh, Clemson undefeated. Notre Dame has one loss, so we'll be rooting for the Fighting Irish. And it looks like we'll be rooting for a lot of upsets because are there any? There's one more ranked matchup between uh, an undefeated North Carolina and an undefeated Syracuse. So at least one of those two teams will take a loss. Uh, let's just root for Syracuse in that one. It sounds more fun. For us, though, we definitely don't want any upsets. We have a little bit of recruiting to do. I added a bunch of low lot guys to the board, so we're going to do a bit of scouting this week. Uh, we'll pop in if there's any gems or anything really crazy good. And there's a bust. Greg Franklin goes down. I've been looking for a good tight end, but it doesn't seem like we're going to really find one because another bust with Phil Wright. Well, RJ Rivera <laughs> might become a new quarterback. I kind of put him on the board because he looks decent as a defensive back, but 95 speed and acceleration, but the 90 throw power? That's a freaking cannon, and you love to see it. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming some of these guys are going to be busts, but you never know. Ooh, Lee Williams is a gem at the athlete. He's pretty quick, and again, decent coverage stats, and that's why he was added onto the board. I want our secondary to become truly locked down. All right, well, we spent most of our points on those guys. Unfortunately, we can't give them points this week, so... Uh, where are we going to give the points? Do we have any scholarships we could offer? That would be pretty big. If we could manage to snag a guy with the insta commit, that would free up quite a bit, unfortunately. Not the case for Ben Patrick, and I don't think we have anything else. I think Darrell Owens isn't quite good enough for us to give the final 50 points to. So instead, we will send those points towards the defensive end, Andre Reed. Uh, we're going to start really going gung-ho on him pretty soon here, so... Give him a little bit so that we don't fall too far behind Oregon. And then we have Dion Rhodes ready for his visit. Another athlete, 63% locked. We're kind of eliminating Purdue's lead. So let's set that visit up. We only have a couple of options. Let's go with the Michigan State game. Try to get it a little bit later in the season. We're actually competing with the Teal Boys for this guy. So that should be pretty big. 
And I guess maybe we'll start adding a bunch of guys to that Michigan State game and try to get some bonus points. Now, before we get into this game, we made a big change today that could seriously affect how good or more likely how bad our team will end up being. Seagator22 and all of the people that helped him create a set of sliders that's available on the College Football Revamp Discord have released a new patch and unlike a slider set like j kits these actually go into the database editor to change values so there's some crazy stuff like if supposedly we don't have fatigue but it's really there but where it really starts to look crazy is some of these numbers 255 on offensive pass interference 244 there and then it allows you not to have multiples of five so 54 I think was previously not possible or a 53 on the face mask uh and then the similar situation with uh the user sliders and the cpu sliders so hopefully these change things up they're supposed to help tremendously and the quick summary given for this iteration of the sliders is that coverage is going to be more active with better zone and man coverage wide receiver aggressiveness and catch animations have been improved there should be better physics and then also better reactions towards stuff like the option, play action, and misdirections. So again, thank you to C Gator and everybody else who worked on this set of sliders. Hopefully it doesn't tank our team. Hopefully it'll be a nice change of pace. And when I was testing them out, they seemed really fun to play with. So let's get into this game and see how it really goes for us. Iowa. Uh, an 83 overall. They've got an 86 offense, but just an 80 defense. So hopefully we can, I don't know, pick on them a little bit with that. And I gotta say, I think it might be blasphemous to put them in any sort of alternates. I really do enjoy Iowa's standard uniforms. Um, I mean, I'm, I kind of like this, uh, alternate one, the all black, but you know, yeah, we're going to go with the all black. I really do like their standard home, but eh, this is a decent look as well. And that way it changes things up and can help show off some of the uh, the work that the revamp team did. We have worn most of our alternates uh, already for the away because we've pretty much only had away games. But alternate three, I think, is what we'll go with for today. Iowa again coming into this game with a better ranked offense, but honestly, not that much better passing the ball more than us running the ball more than us but only by a little bit and then defensively they're giving up a lot of passing yards and a lot of rushing yards so hopefully our offense can find a groove they've been doing a pretty good job uh, and then just a few stops from the defense as always could be big for iowa the top players their quarterback is number one which is never a great sign for us 89 overall and it looks like he's willing to run which is a little bit scary and then you go to a couple of linemen one on the offensive side and one on the defensive side at least we have guys on a hot streak blair has been doing pretty good we just need durham to start carrying the load a little bit more and for them a center and a corner out for the game those are big injuries one out for the season one out for eight weeks we'll see if we can capitalize on those players being out for this game and again, just try to continue to stay ranked here with a good win. So here we are, Kinnick Stadium. Big game here in the Big Ten. We need the win here. We really do. Tails never fails except for, well, okay, not this time. We're like three of four on coin tosses on the day, which is around the season. Goodness, which is nice. We're going to take the ball to start with. Something just tells me that we need to get off to a good start. This one a kick way out to the left. Ron Johnson hasn't had great blocking. Oh my gosh, what was that? We <laughs> That hurt so much. Any opportunity to have a good return goes out of the window there. When your guys just run past their blockers, we're going to let Albert throw on first down. The slant over the middle is open to Fontenot. And that's going to be a good eight-yard catch. And now let's try to run. Safety, just a single safety back there, but he's playing pretty far back. Durham Finch gets his first carry. That's good for four yards and a first down. I do want to try and rely on the run a little bit more in this game, so we'll hope for that as we'll just hand it off up the middle again. Finch breaking it to a couple of tackles. That's a tough five yards to pick up and really strong from him. Exactly the type of running we need to see from him is he'll go out and Stan Williams will come in. 
Second and five waiting. Right bumper over the middle. Wide open. Curtis comes down with it. Safety playing a little bit too far back. And we're across midfield. Albert, some accurate throws to start the day. Has you feeling good. As we'll go triple option on this first down. I'm going to hand it off. I don't know if Stan was the right call there. But I know that that was a safe decision. And sometimes I just feel like I'm going to make a stupid mistake. So it's better to just be safe. Rather than sorry, Durham Finch uh, on the counter only gets a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third down. Only good news for us here is that this is definitely four down territory. I like my options here. We'll see if anybody can get open. The curl was open way too early for Fontenot. Got a little bit of a block there from Gentry. And that's another first down for us. Great looks from Albert so far. But again, just got to keep running the ball. Really make sure that Iowa respects that as an option. Durham Finch gets hit in the backfield. We're lucky to only lose a yard. They really burned the offensive line there. Here's the question, though. Will they expect us to run it again on second and 11? Out towards the edge. The blocking is great. Finch off to the races. That's a huge first down. And we're going to pick up 12 yards in the process. I was wondering if the sliders were going to make it more difficult, but maybe they've made it too easy for us. First and 10. I'm really going to eat those words, aren't I? Williams, oh, broke the tackle, but then stumbled down. That was interesting. I do like that he was able to pick up uh, three yards in the process, though, as we will again step back to throw here. Hoping for the best, Albert. This is a tough one. Jody Gentry, oh. Looked for the freshman, but it was inaccurate from Albert. First real misstep from the offense on the drive. We're lucky it's not picked off, and we're going to have to go to the air. Hoping for the best on third and seven. Again, I think this is four down territory. Gentry was open. I was late to throw, but he catches it. And just like that, the name changes, and Jody's into the end zone. We're going to take a 7 nothing lead over Iowa here in Kinnick. That is a huge pass wide open. You love to see it. All right, let's put this one deep. Jones gets it into the end zone. A little bit of a rarity, and they're going to bring it out, which is great news. If we can gun down on him, that was a good return. Out past the 25, so he made it worth it. And now let's see what our defense can do. They've done really well all season long, but this Hawkeyes offense, who knows what they have for them. Stepping back to throw. Frank Blair almost got in there. Good reaction time, but it's a first down. And Iowa immediately into the hurry up. Not something I would expect from them, but maybe we can contend with it. They will step back to throw again, trying to wait over the middle wide open, but he throws up a bomb and Dallas Miller gets the deflection. Almost his third pick of the season. That kind of looked like Albert trying to throw a deep ball. Just overestimated his abilities. And now second and 10. A decent chance. An option maybe out towards the edge. We're going to string that out and drop him for a loss of two. That one was all too easy. All righty. Third down. 12 to go for Iowa. I'm on, accidentally on Quentin Whitfield. This one. Oh my gosh. Just an absolute bomb. Blair has the tackle broken. You can't have that. In a cover six, we get burned deep. Brent Gray just goes. And a beautiful pass to find him in stride as Iowa ties it up. That one was our chance really to take the hold of this game. But a big play is enough. We'll see what we can do on the return here. The blocking, not much better than the first time around. Flank Blair does get to the 20, but then gets obliterated. So it'll be 79 yards to find the end zone on the second drive here. Handing it off to Durham up the middle. Decent blocking. Gets us four yards. It'll be second and six as again we'll look to the air. Passing matchups don't look to be favorable for us. Outside the pocket. B was kind of open. I just had to get rid of it. I, I, I can't remember whether or not to scramble with Albert sometimes. Like every once in a while it works, but then uh, half of the time I just forget that he's so slow. Kind of had guys open. Gentry was open for a little bit, but just no way we were making that throw. So it's third and six. And this is a tough one. Wilson came down with it through the contact. Oh, that was all on him. Prayed for the bailout on that one, and the tight end comes down with it. Go back to the ground here because it seems a little bit safer. The stretch, Finch breaks a tackle. 
Got a couple of positive yards. And now we'll just let Stan go up the middle. Again, really trying to make sure that they respect the running game. And Stan Williams had a nice broken tackle, but then got stuck on the lineman. Third in two. We're three of three on our third down so far in the game. And we're going to try the triple option on this one. We'll see. Albert has it safely. No reason to pitch it out. Just got to make sure that we keep possession of the ball. That pass puts us to the 49. So we'll see if Durham can get us across midfield on the dive up the middle. He does so and gets a little bit more as we get to the 45. And that's actually going to end the first quarter. There's a quick first quarter. All tied up, seven apiece. Looking okay. Just got to keep rolling. Well, let's see what we can do to open up this second quarter. Wilson's wide open on the little corner route. And he's having a good start to the game. You love to see it. Iowa, the fans here getting a little bit quiet. We'll bring Brian Curtis in motion for a little triple option with the wide receiver. Keeping it. Can't risk that pitch. We're just lucky to get to the line. But Albert took a shot. And we will go back to the air on this second and 10. Hoping for the best. Kind of looking at Fontenot. Oh, that's risky. Through the whip route. We got bailed out. That should have been a pick six. Absolutely no reason why we should still have the football here. But on third and 10, we'll try to make the most of it. They're not really bringing the best pressure. And I took like an 80-yard sack. Ah, held the ball too long. I just hate to see it. Can't go for the field goal because it's a 60-yarder. No chance we're going to get that. And converting a fourth and 24 seems almost impossible. So we'll try for the coffin corner punt. Got all of it. It's not great. It's not terrible either. At least it's inside the 15, but that's a disappointing drive. Should have just thrown the ball away, really, but got greedy. Was looking for the home run, and it doesn't pay off. And now Iowa's going to hand the ball off. Lot of space up the middle. Dallas Miller slows him down. Eventually gets tackled. The Gavin Walker picks up 14 on his first carry. And I don't want to have anything to do with that. We're bringing the big blitz. Trying to get to this quarterback. We hit him as he's throwing, but he's able to get it away. So he's lucky it's just incomplete. Well, we've been burned before. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Second and 10, expecting the pass. They put it on the ground. He's not going down. And he got 11 yards and a first down. That's brutal. Well, I'm just going to bring pressure again and expect uh, another pass. Can we jump the snap at all? Oh, it's got to be a screen. Finally a decent stop. We give up three yards, but not more than that. So I'm fine with it. I guess the real question is, can we just get them off the field? This hurry up could really cause problems for our defense. We've never been great about it. I left my man open. He's going to break a tackle. Another one and then get pushed out of bounds at the or uh, for a third and one. Goodness, it feels like I can't talk today. And we're bringing pressure again, believe it or not. Third and one. Don't want to let them run it up the middle. We had the chance to blow it up. Dallas Miller. Huge stop. It's fourth and one. Pump formation for Iowa. Uh, I don't trust it, though. Fully expecting them to fake this punt. And they do it. And it's going to be enough. Oh, my gosh. We might have the worst track record in all of college football when it comes to stopping the fake punt. We know when it's going to happen, and we can't do anything to stop it. I need to start doing the man instead of the zone, I guess. Dallas Miller. Oh, we're going to blow that one up. If you're going to fake the punt, we better at least knock you out, get you off the field as soon as possible. Loss of eight on that sack. That'll set us up with a second and 18. Hopefully we can get the stop here. They're not going to go to the air on this second down, and it's another sack. It's third and 26. You love to see it. Philip Anderson, huge play from him. Defensive tackle getting involved in a big way there. No way that we can screw this one up, right? Just have to cover the middle of the field, not give up anything. Big quarterback almost took another sack. Hit as he's thrown. It's fourth and 26. Could have been fourth and 32. But certainly they won't be faking this one. Definitely made up for it. In fact, we're going to get better field position out of this. The question is, will we have enough clock? Two minutes to work with. A returnable punt? And he muffed it. Are you kidding me? 
good on Blair to fall on that ball, but man, our best chance for good field position in the game so far, and he absolutely screwed it up. But Durham Finch Jr.'s off to the races across midfield. He's outrunning almost everybody, and that'll make up for it. Two minutes left in the half, and we are in scoring position almost immediately. Down to the 33-yard line. Now we just have to hope that I don't screw this up. We'll see their safety's playing up quite a bit. Do we have time? I'm heaving this to the end zone. Oh no, that's going to be picked. Oh God. I don't know if we can continue to get lucky anymore in this game. I got to stop throwing up home run balls with Albert today because he's obviously not suited for it. Durham, after the big run, he gets wrangled up in the backfield for a loss of four. Now it's third and very long for us. The worst part about this is that now we're in a really dangerous spot where I've got to throw a long ball. So we'll see what we can do. Let's put Wilson on the seam and step back looking to throw. Oh my gosh, the pressure. Gentry was wide open over on the left side, just couldn't get it there in time. Both defenses have come to play today after those opening drives as we're going to let the clock burn down here as far as we can and try to get this coffin cornered even better it might bounce oh just into the end zone so close to being the perfect punt but they'll get a chance 30 seconds three timeouts and 80 yards to try and take the lead into the half we know for a fact that it's going to be a huge passing attack from iowa what can we do to stop the hawkeyes they're going to run it on first down and I'm going to take a timeout if they're not going to. You might think it's a little bit weird, but I see it as it may be a chance for us to get the ball back, which is really all that I care about. They step back to throw on this one, and well, it's complete. <laughs> we probably could have been at halftime. Now I'm a little bit worried. Trying to be aggressive. You know, I just see it as a chance maybe for us to create some turnovers as this one's over the middle, and there's their first timeout with 18 seconds. I'm going to feel an awful lot like the Bills if we let them score here with so little time on the clock. Let's use your Carter. Try to get that 10th sack of the season. They're going to throw it out in the flat. A broken tackle. Another broken tackle. And we burn seven seconds, but they get the first down and get the timeout off. And it's time to just play prevent D, which is a little bit scary, but I think it's the right play. Hoping for the best here. You never know. We could still create a turnover. As that one is almost picked off by Royal. Good job going up to get it. Just kind of pushed out of the way by the other receiver there. And it will be the three deep as there's five seconds left. Expecting just a Hail Mary on this play. No timeouts for Iowa, so they can't do anything else. Plenty of time for the quarterback. Heaves it up. Uh, this is not a good looking prevent. They caught it. Thank goodness. Short of the goal line because we had one guy over there defending it that's the worst prevent i've ever seen you hate to see it tied up at least going into the half they get the ball i'm not feeling super confident we haven't played great thankfully iowa hasn't either it's gonna be just the team that decides to turn it on for the second half that will win this one and with them getting the ball first that really scares me but we've shot ourselves in the foot a couple of times if the defense can just get a couple more stops, I think that we have a great chance to win this one. While we kick this one off, I want to remind you guys to hit that like button. It really helps grow the channel. And man, we are fast approaching 5,000 subs, which is incredible. So if you haven't already subscribed, maybe consider doing that as well. We're going to try to play some defense here. I just got burned. Thankfully, Blair... Oh my gosh, tackle's broken all over the place. Blair's getting burned all over the place today, though. Feels like, especially with their center out injured, maybe they're not the best uh, line today, so we need to start bringing more pressure. That out route wide open. Whitaker a step late and having a chance to jump the route. And it really does just seem like if we can rush this quarterback, we can cause some mistakes. So we're bringing the pressure, trying to get Miller in there. Open man again. He doesn't break the tackle, thankfully. And I'm just going to continue to absolutely send everything that we have at this QB. Cause problems. We hit him early there. Finds a man, but he does go out of bounds. And at least we get them in a third down. And Iowa still in the hurry up. Can they contend with this one? 
We need to get in there with Royal awfully quick. Somebody's going to be open there. It is over the middle. Man coverage is probably going to break down often in that situation. They're doing enough to slow us. And now they're inside the red zone, which you hate to see. This one going to be a counter. Running back. Man, he continues to just fall forward for like an extra five yards every run. Just five carries for that running back, but 36 yards. We even tuned in on him. We knew it was going to be a run, just couldn't stop it. Expecting this one to be more of the same. On first and goal, that's going to help tremendously. A false start. Back him up here. Give us a chance to make some subs on defense as well. And we'll see this first and goal we can do. Try not to leave two people too open. It's a screen. And we do a good job of stopping it. They basically got back to where they were, but we'll count that just as a stop on the first down. Feel like we have a good chance just in general here, but we'll see. Man goes in motion. How can we cover it? Running backs open. Oh my gosh. Hicks is so slow. Oh, there's no reason that shouldn't have been a touchdown. It's going to be third and goal here. What can we do to stop it? Quarterback five wide. We know it'll be a pass. Can we do anything to slow them down? Quarterback's keeping it. We're going to drill him at the line of scrimmage. And we might be holding here. It's fourth and goal. And it will be the field goal formation. For Iowa, maybe a tactical false start there to make it easier for the kicker. So actually, that kind of gives me the green light to run at it. Try to block it. No chance. <laughs> Kick is up and it's good. 10-7. I'll call that a stop for the defense that we didn't give up the touchdown. And now we have the chance to take a lead here. Ron is going to return this. Gentry's our leading blocker out there on the edge. It's not looking good. Ron doesn't get the corner. Tried to do everything to make it a home run return. And uh, just the hero ball not working today. So I think it's just time to put it on the ground. Short dump off passes. Not look for anything big. Triple option. Got to try to get the pitch out, but Johnson doesn't do it. So it's a loss of two on first down. This is kind of what I expected from Iowa's defense. And it's causing us some problems. How about finish up the middle on the dive? All right, positive yards. We needed that, but it's still third and six. Still just midway through the third quarter, so we won't need to panic yet. But it could get a little bit worrisome if we can't find anybody. Oh, no. Okay, we give it to Gentry again on that curl route, and it works out. Great catch. Good first down. That'll give us a, a chance to catch our breath. And again, we're just going to start to run, I think, way more as this game progresses. Durham out towards the edge. Gets the corner. A tackle misses. And he's across midfield, across the 45. Well, Durham had 184 yards in four games leading up to this one. He's at 104 on the day. Absolutely massive. This is risky. I'm getting the pitch out to Stan. Mostly this so that Albert didn't take a shot, but that was risky. Just not being able to see where that defender out on the edge was. This could maybe be a decent chance for a play action pass. So we're going to give it a shot. Hoping for the best to bring in some pressure. A was open, but we just got to, well, I guess we got to scramble with Albert and almost pick up the first down. We had guys open there, but again, I'm just terrified sometimes to pass with Albert. So we run. <laughs> handed it off on this first down or, or sorry third and one to get the first down with Stan Williams and it almost feels like we're at that part of the game where they just can't stop us when the defense gets tired that's when Stan Williams feasts and he's doing a decent job so far I will say as this game starts to get near the fourth quarter if we don't score on this drive it's going to get even more worrisome oh I cut it back inside because I thought the blocker was going to go to the edge and he actually went inside to meet us. Unfortunately, that means it's just a gain of one. It'll be third and six and a risky decision here. I'm going with the slip screen. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of it, but that's what we're going to go with. It looks like Stan has some blockers, but they don't get picked up. He breaks a tackle, but it's not enough. Maybe a little bit late making the throw there, but it's fourth and three. And I think I got to make the what I consider to be the smart decision. Kick the field goal. Let's just be tied up here. Gosh, almost shorted that one. But 10-all. 
We have a quarter, a just over a quarter to play. We just can't be down by two scores, I think, in the fourth quarter. So we can even it up at 10 each and just put some pressure on the defense to get another stop. And that'll give the offense a chance to maybe have like a, a game-winning walk-off touchdown drive. Great job from the special teams gunning down there, keeping these guys inside the 30 as we'll try to rush five on first down. Hoping for the best over the middle. This could get dangerous. They're going to pass it out to the flat. It's a decent pickup of five on first down. And on this second down, we're rushing six. Kata keep bringing the pressure. They go for the run. Ooh, he tried to change directions. It's a loss of four. That is absolutely huge. And that should be the end of the third quarter. So into the fourth we go. They have a third and nine. If we can get the stop here and just immediately get the ball, that would be absolutely huge. You want to take the lead early in the fourth quarter. But you just never know. Not really sure what's going on with the screen here, but it's kind of how I'm feeling. The real question here is... What can we do to stop these guys on this third down? We've struggled on third down so far this game. And there's another one. A beautiful throw. They find Gary Curry for 24 yards. He just slipped it in there on that slant route. And it works out beautifully. And again, we're bringing some pressure. Let's see if Dallas Miller can get in there and continue to disrupt. Any flags there? No. Good stop. Looked like they kind of went straight back to the same play, but we managed to hold them. So that'll bring up a second and 10. We'll just go back to a normal defense. Good running, good blocking. Oh my gosh, my over pursuit kills me again. Should have been a third down. Instead, it's a first down. Not only that, but they're across midfield. I'm struggling today. It's as simple as that. Trying to bring a blitz. We'll see what we can do. They go with the run. London enforces the fumble. Sims picks it up and he... Oh my gosh. A chance. The defense gets the stop. London with the hit stick. It works out that time. I was not prepared for that to be an opportunity or an outcome on that play. First turnover of the game for either team. And now we control... Everything. Durham Finch, a seven-yard rush on first down. This is exactly what we needed. Even a field goal here wouldn't be the end of the world as we'll look to pass on the play action. Second down. Fontenot's wide open over the middle and he drops the ball. Oh, Jeff, you cannot do that. Leading receiver on the team is not coming up clutch today. We're going to have to hand it off. Durham Finch, oh my gosh, turbo. Just absolutely flying all over the place. All right. Well, no reason not to just keep running at this point is how I feel. Stan Williams will come in for another carry out towards the edge. Picking up a block. Can he make the safety miss? Nobody can break the tackle and go out of bounds after picking up 13. This will be interesting. Ooh, maybe not. We were going to run a counter to the short side of the field, but I don't like that at all. So give it to Durham. Give him some blockers to work with. Oh, man. <laughs> he looked like he was having some movement there. But ended up losing a yard. Definitely in field goal range. Just can't cough up the ball. Safety's coming up. Wilson looks like he could be. Either Wilson looks like they could be a good option. Pressure is coming. I'm giving it to Zach. Wide open. In. Not into the end zone. Thought he was going to score for sure. But gets tackled at the goal line. And part of me was tempted to start burning the clock here, but I think if we can score immediately, give it to Stan Williams up the middle, now we could have plenty of time if Iowa manages to score quickly. 17 to 10. I got distracted while I was kicking, so this is a short kick. Opens him up for a decent return, and let's Royal. Oh, so close to blowing him up there. The Hawkeyes. Four minutes to at least score a touchdown. They could be in a lot of trouble here soon. They're gonna step back, looking to throw. It's a screen, intercepted by Blair! He just managed to yoink it. Pulled it straight out of the hands of the receiver. And that is back-to-back -back turnovers from Iowa. And for sure, we have to win the game now, right? Immediately, I'm gonna look to burn the clock. We are in field goal range. Even if we go three and out here, if we hit the field goal, a 10-point lead would be massive. 
but a first down could be enough just to seal the deal right now. Durham Finch just keep handing it off to him. Breaks a couple of tackles. Man, if nothing else, at least he's burning a lot of clock on these runs. Let's go out towards the edge with Stan Williams and see what he can do. A little power run and trying to wait for the blockers. It's beautiful. Stan got the first down. Does get pushed out of bounds, but we're not inside two minutes, so it's not a huge deal. And there is no reason not to run. Expect Iowa to start taking their timeouts real soon here as we're nearing two minutes left in the game. Durham Finch Jr. cuts it back inside. That's a almost a first in goal. And there's the first timeout from the Hawkeyes. This could be absolutely big. Up the middle, Durham Finch into the end zone. The coup de grace. That is certainly going to be enough. 204 left in the game, and we're up two touchdowns. Durham Finch showing some strong running today. Shout out to Kevin Calabro for the call there. <laughs> he, he probably did a little bit better. Royal can't do anything, but oh, that was a hard hit. All right, one more turnover. Is that too much to ask for? There's going to step back to throw. Oh, I thought Royal had it. That was that was a good throw. Fit that into a tiny window. Big on Hagen to come down with it. Iowa really going to have to be in the hurry up. That's a, okay. Never mind. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I bit on the play action so hard. I was about to call them stupid for running the ball in that situation, but it's me. Egg on my face. <laughs> They're across midfield. Left the running back open kind of intentionally, but he breaks my tackle. Definitely didn't want that one to happen, but the tackle inbounds. The clock is moving. This is an insanely fast hurry up from Iowa. I guess it's not technically over yet, but I'm not feeling too scared right now. Even if they manage to score on this drive, they're going to need to get the onside kick. So still a lot that has to go wrong for us as we will go inside a minute and 15. Taking a while to snap the ball here. Out route covered over the middle. A diving catch. Holds onto it through the contact as well. But again, it's just the, the clock moving. What are they going to be able to do? Same play over the middle. Whitaker. Oh my gosh. Somebody just take the hit stick away from me. A normal tackle there and we probably stop them. Iowa goes into the end zone though. All right. What does the hands team have for us today? Ooh, no. Iowa got it. Oh no. This is a disaster. The onside kick was recovered. I don't know who number 18 was. It's Chef Fontenot. He's selling today. He dropped an easy pass and absolutely screws up the onside kick. So Iowa with a chance to tie it up. 58 seconds in two timeouts after the drive that they just had is more than enough time. We desperately need a stop again here. Wide open over the middle. He dropped it. Oh, if we could have got the pick, all would have been forgiven. Something's got to give here. Defense is absolutely struggling at the moment. And there's just a dump off over the middle. But again, we can't tackle him. And they get the first down to stop the clock. I don't know why they took the time out there. But that bails us out. Allowed us kind of to take a breather. I'm going to use her Carter here. We need pressure on the quarterback instantly. There it is. And there's the sack. Can't take the time out the clock. He's going to be running. That might be enough for us just to get a win here. We'll see what we can do. They're going to clock the ball there. Third and 16, 36 seconds left. We know what they have to do, but we just haven't been able to stop them recently. This one, they will step back to throw. Quarterback has a man open. Ron Johnson. Got burned on the curl, but gets back in time to make the tackle. And that'll be a fourth and six game on the line here. Coverage is okay. Quarterback scrambling. He's going to get sacked, and that'll do it. We're going to win the game. Moving to four and one will stay ranked. That is so big. All the time in the world, but it's a coverage sack. I feel like the quarterback maybe should have scrambled on that one. But instead, Albert can take the knee. Iowa will take their final timeout. Unfortunately for the Hawkeyes, nothing that they can do to stop this one. 
Albert, there's the final knee in the victory formation. You love to see it. And we can just let the clock burn out here. The final few seconds, four and one again. Two games away from making a bowl game, and we start our uh, our tenure here in the Big Ten. Two and zero, oh, looking good for our conference schedule. Both wins on the road, absolutely huge. Durham Finch, twenty carries for a hundred and fifty yards, almost doubled his season total in one game. He might be back on track for a decent season. Jeff Fontenot, though, we're going to have to have a sit down with him and really talk about why he's trying to ruin everything for this team. And the hands team is going to get a lot of work uh, in this upcoming week because that was almost a disaster. Man, what a game. Really just a story of the first and fourth quarter. Nothing happened in the middle of it. Six points scored between both teams in the second and third quarter, which is not all that impressive. 24 to 17 at the end of the day. Really should have been 24 to 10, but Jeff Fontenot selling out. Only 16 rushing yards for Iowa at the end of the day, but they passed for 356. Our secondary got smoked all day long. Frank Blair had a huge interception and we created a huge turnover, but just all those sacks were massive. We win the turnover battle and the time of possession battle. Uh did a decent job running we just kind of struggled to pass it started really strong and then it kind of felt like it went downhill from there again Durham Finch is our offensive player of the game with Frank Blair deservedly so being the defensive player of the game because that interception was absolutely huge and again it moves us to four in one do we have a bye week no uh oh number 11 Nebraska up next we have a pretty tough schedule if they won they could very easily be top 10 and we could be top 20. Well, some more recruits are ready to visit, so that's good news. What I'm curious about is what are we ranked? Number 17th, and Nebraska at 4-0 is number 10. This is a big matchup here in the Big Ten. They're a B-plus team, so probably around 90 overall. They lead in every statistical category, even rush defense, where I thought we were doing really well. They're obliterating. Have they played good teams? They... Uh, that's us. They beat their FCS team. They beat Oklahoma. They beat Nevada and Maryland. Okay, they haven't really played anybody. They have a tough stretch. Us, Penn State, Purdue all coming up. And speaking of Penn State and Purdue, take a look here at the top 25. Uh, Penn State, 1-3, but they're ranked number 19 because they just upset Purdue in overtime. The Boilermakers were ranked 6th in the country undefeated but fell to the Nittany Lions. So I don't know if that's good or bad for our conference. Bad in that a top 10 team lost, but now there is two teams in the top 25 as opposed to just the one. But it is looking really interesting. Coastal 3-1 and one still. Any other losses? It looks like there was actually a decent amount. Let's go from the top down. Clemson lost to Notre Dame, which we wanted because that's an undefeated team. Purdue is an undefeated team that lost... Uh, Cincinnati is an undefeated team that lost. They lost to Navy. Illinois lost. Georgia Southern lost. Every team that has a zero in the loss column, we want to lose. We need everybody to have at least one just to really help our odds of making the playoff at the end of the season. Well, I'm excited to see what happens in this matchup with Nebraska, but unfortunately, that will be it for this episode. If you enjoy this video, please feel free to hit the like button. It really does help these videos uh, get seen by more people. And uh, in turn, that helps grow the channel. And speaking of which, if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. Again, we're nearing 5,000 subscribers, which is insane to me. So thank you guys again for all the support that you've shown recently. Once you've done all that, you can head down to the description where you can find links to... Oh gosh, this is going to be long this time. There's my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. So, so my Twitter, I've added links to uh, a TikTok and an Instagram. There's our community Discord. And then there's the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.